Hello and welcome to another edition of Ask Ron. This is number 41. Can you believe it? Um, it's going to be mainly one topic today, but let me read some uh, comments, questions that I got based on the last Ask Ron. So Fabian Gym Food says, tell us something about your weight as a hard gainer. And he posted up a uh, magazine cover I had in 1993, a little magazine uh, published out of Cyprus. Island off the coast of Greece. Giles knows he's vacationed many times there. His dad lives there. Uh, Stuart McRobert, he published that for a while. So I was, I was on the cover of that once. That was my only cover. That was 25 years ago. Um, it seems like it's a lot easier for you to gain weight today. Is it because of age or you're a better eater today? Uh, and then DPH said, Ron, I think at our age, so he must be around my age, it's more of refining the muscle we do have. Don't get me wrong. When I hit it, I kill it and still strive for every ounce more of muscle I can put on. Yet the reality is there, and if I couldn't build an arm bigger than 20 inches when I was in my 20s, 30s, or 40s, it probably isn't going to happen now, without getting soft, that is. Good thing with age and added years of training is muscle maturity. I look much better now at 250 versus 20 years ago at 250. Betty Una, who is a very valuable member of the forum, Betty, uh, Betty he uh, posts a lot of, Photos and videos, especially when we're covering contests. I appreciate that, Betty. Scorecards. Uh, he's, he helps out a lot, so I appreciate what you do, Betty. After an age, it is no longer about building new muscle, but about keeping what has been achieved. But at the end of the day, you train and feed in the same way with perseverance and passion. So there are not many changes in your routine and lifestyle. Albertos. After training for so many years, we have probably tried everything under the sun. I still try to find ways to improve the training supplements and nutrition but i don't think it will make a big difference so really two topics i want to cover today but the main one is you know what's a hard gainer and then after that is you know how do you know when you're done gaining when you're all your gains are completely maxed out so the term hard gainer uh, i don't really like the term because it's it's one of those uh you know self-limiting prophecy type of things where if you think of yourself as a hard gainer uh, and you identify as a hard gainer, you're probably going to have a hard time making gains, right? Because you always have this, this built-in default excuse. If, if you don't gain, it's because you're a hard gainer. Uh, however hard you're training or how well you're eating, uh, you must be doing it as hard as you can. And if you're not gaining, it's because you're a hard gainer. But that always gives you an out. So I don't like it. Uh, hard gainer, what does it really, really mean? It's a genetic end of the spectrum. Uh, genetically, humans are on a wide spectrum, but there are averages. Let's look at height, for example. The United States, I believe, unless it's increased again, the average height is about five foot nine for males, adult males. So that means when you're walking down a crowded street, the majority of you people, men you pass, adult men, are probably going to be between five seven and five ten or eleven. They're going to be in that range. There's not going to be a lot of guys much shorter than that. In the United States, these are Americans. Some obviously other countries uh, like Southeast Asia or whatever, you're gonna have shorter men. And you're not gonna have a ton of guys over 5'10 uh, because that's way, that's above average and the shorter guys are below average. So most people are average uh, with the height thing. Obviously, if you go to like Scandinavia, then there are countries like the Netherlands where the average male is six, one and a half or six, two or something ridiculous. But anyway, genetically, most of us are average, and that applies to gaining muscle as well. That means most people have a little bit of trouble putting muscle on, just as any human being does. There are going to be a very, very few people who put on muscle very, very easily. They get bigger and stronger. Just, you know, they respond to training. A lot of them are going to be bigger and stronger than average people before they ever did any kind of exercise. Others, the potential is always there. And as soon as they start training with weights, boom, they just blow the F up. They get huge and strong. and It happens very quickly for them. The, the results come very, very easily. A lot of the pro bodybuilders I've talked to fall into that rare category where either they were always muscular regardless, and it could have just been from you know, calisthenics, from practicing for other sports, or, or from nothing at all in some cases, or as soon as they started training, they got huge. I mean, we, I just did an interview a few weeks back with Roly Winkler, and he talks about his friend bringing him to the gym for the first time. And his friend had been training for a few years. 
And within a few weeks, Roly was bigger than his friend who had been doing it for years and years. That's how it is. So they're rare. They're that tiny bit of the spectrum where they gain very easily. At the other end of the spectrum, way down at the other end, you're going to have people who are, their bodies are very, very resistant to getting bigger and stronger. Uh, typically, they're going to be on that, that body type, the soma type that we refer to as an ectomorph. Uh, not necessarily tall, but they're usually uh, light boned, narrow shoulders, narrow hips. Uh, they're small people and they have high metabolisms. They often stay lean. They're very lean naturally. Uh, and these are the guys you see walking around skinny, but they always have like veins in their arms and uh, a six pack. But, you know, putting on a, putting on muscle is just incredibly difficult for these guys. Uh, obviously, some of them figured out uh, ways to put on a good amount of muscle by just persevering and training hard, eating a ton of food. And eventually, well, some of them will get into drugs, too. Drugs, obviously, will always change the game to an extent because they allow more lean muscle tissue to be built than would normally be possible. So when people identify as a hard gainer, what, how do you know you're really a hard gainer? Uh, usually when we all start training, we make pretty good, pretty good gains in the first year. Uh, I don't want to quantify it in terms of pounds because that's all, it's different for everybody. Somebody might put on uh, five to 10 pounds and look so much better and so different where another person uh, with a different type of frame, uh, maybe they'll put on 10 to 20 pounds or more. And, you know, it, it's all relative. It doesn't, you can't go by the, by something so arbitrary as the, the amount of weight you gain. But generally speaking, because training is a pretty new stimulus to the body, it's going to have its best effects on pretty much everybody in the very beginning because it's a shock to the system and the the, your, your neural system and your muscles, they're all just fighting to adapt with this crazy stress of straining against the weights and the resistance and the muscle damage and everything. And, you know, the, the way the body compensates and adapts is to grow more muscle tissue. You become bigger and you get stronger. And typically that's going to slow down after about the first year for most people. Even, uh, even the people who are easy gainers, they still make their best gains typically in the first year, year, two years of training. And of course, it's going to slow down after that. Um, hard gainers, they don't see those kind of results. Uh, I've known a couple of them, not many, because as I say, there's there are not many genuine hard gainers. I have known a couple in my lifetime. And, uh, you know, it was always a struggle to get them to eat enough. For one thing, a lot of them just don't have the appetite. Others, they had such crazy metabolisms that no matter how much they ate, it was just always a struggle to put an ounce of weight on these people. Uh, and sometimes they had to resort to a lot of junk food, unfortunately, but just to get in the calories where they would finally start seeing some gains, which you know I wouldn't recommend for the average person. I wouldn't tell the average person if you're having trouble gaining weight, go out and eat double cheeseburgers and fries and pizza, ice cream, cookies and hearts. That's just going to make most people with average metabolisms fat. Um, so you're probably not a hard gainer. Uh, you know, no, very few of us, with the exception of that rare group that I talked about, the easy gainers, are ever going to gain muscle as fast as we would like or to the extent that we would like. You know, so uh, I was on the cover of that Hard Gainer magazine. Am I a hard gainer? No, I'm not a hard gainer. I'm, I'm average. I'm just like all of you guys. Most of you watching this, you're average. Uh, you train hard. You eat right. You get your rest you'll put on some muscle. You're probably not going to put on a ton of muscle. You're not going to look like, you know, we're, we're so used to seeing these genetic freaks, these guys like Phil Heath and uh, Jose and Dave Henry and uh, Kai, these guys who are just so thick. Uh, they were meant to be like that. And like I said, I, I've harped on it so many times, but I'm always going to repeat it because anybody, all you average guys watching out there, drugs are going to make you bigger. Absolutely. Are they going to make you that big? No, probably not. The odds are very, very slim unless you were meant to be that big. And most of us weren't meant to be that big. So you're probably not a hard gainer. You're probably an average gainer. So all that being said, how long can you expect to keep gaining and, and keep getting bigger and more muscular? That's very tough to quantify. It's an individual matter. I have known people who gradually made gains for years and years and years. I'm talking about spans of time as long as 20 plus years they kept making incremental gains 
Uh, I've known plenty of other people who pretty much put all their size on that they ever had within two, three, maybe four years, and that's it. After that, they never got any bigger. Uh, why didn't they get any bigger? Again, it's impossible to say because we don't know exactly what was going on with them. Did they continue to train exactly the same and you know refuse to have an open mind and try new methods, try new rep ranges, uh, just being open to new ideas and trying new strategies because you never know. Uh, I was just talking to Chris Bumstead yesterday for his column, and one thing that he mentioned, and he's only 22 or 23, but whatever, he just fig he figured this out at a young age, was that his legs, which are incredible, as we know, they respond very well to lower reps, like eight reps. They get a pump and they grow, where most of his upper body, uh, such as his back and especially his arms, they do not. He's found for arms in particular, he, he needs to have re uh, reps up in the range of 20. But he's seeing results now with that. Most people wouldn't try that. It wouldn't even occur to them that my arms haven't grown forever. Maybe I should do something different. Maybe 20 reps. I should do 20, 25 reps for my sets. But they wouldn't do it because they'd be afraid. Well, that's too many reps. My arms will shrink. Well, they can't grow. Well, here's the thing. Whenever you're thinking about the way you train and entertaining the possibility of changing the way you train, think about it this way. What do you have to lose? If you haven't grown in a very long time, and especially if you have a body part that has not responded in years, because that's that's the true story for a lot of us who've been doing this, is you might have a stubborn body part and it's looked exactly the same way for years. That means whatever you're doing for it, all that effort you're putting into it is yielding zero results. Nothing. Nothing's happening. So if you've been training your arms, for example, in the 8 to 10 range, or 8 to 12, whatever, because that's what's supposed to be the best range and it is for most people it works very well for a lot of people but maybe it doesn't work that great for you and you wouldn't know it unless you tried and you probably tried lower reps lower reps rarely work because the muscle's not under tension long enough but you probably have never tried higher reps and keeping the muscle under tension maybe doing things like 21s or supersets things like that giant sets and a lot of guys won't do that because they're thinking all well, the weight's gonna be too light i can't grow with that it's too many reps. It's, you know, I can't do these crazy giant sets with six, eight, ten exercises back to back. The weights are too light. Yeah, I'll get a pump, but, you know, there's no way I can grow. You're not growing anyway. So what do you have to lose by trying it? You have nothing to lose. And frankly, you're being a stubborn idiot for insisting on doing something for the rest of your life that's not going to give you any results. You're wasting your time and your effort. You know, you could go, you could keep doing that until you're 50, 60. So that leads me to my next uh, subtopic here is how old are you going to, how old will you be or how long will you been training when it's just not possible to make any more actual gains in size? You're not going to get any bigger than that. Um, I've heard, I've read from many reputable people who have stated that you're probably never going to reach your full genetic potential. You'll come very, very close if you try long enough and hard enough. But very few people actually will put out all the effort and do the right things for long enough to get to 100% of their full genetic potential, if something's even possible. But I do think if you've been training for a long, long span of time, in my case, it's I'm coming up on 35 years because I started being consistent with training, meaning not missing any workouts. These were bodybuilding workouts at age 14. It was, you know, bench presses and some curls, but still. Consistently training, um, it'll be 35 years this this fall. That's a long time. So you know, it, it could it could very well easily be argued that if I haven't gotten as big as I'm going to get by now, I'm not going to. And what could possibly change things? And, and that that is hard to argue against. Um, you know, again, have I been doing everything right? Have I been training hard enough? Have I been trying new methods to find out if there are exercises that might work better for me that I never considered or rep ranges or, or, or various techniques. I have tried a lot. You know, some people say I've tried everything. It's impossible to have tried everything because there's so many ideas out there, especially now we're all on the internet. We have access to so many different theories, methods, strategies that people have tried and shared and they're sharing with them in blogs, on YouTube videos, all over the place, on forums. There are always new ideas uh, that you can that you can look at and try for yourself. 
but generally speaking if you've been training that long and you've been doing it the right way meaning you've been consistent uh and your joints are healthy it's another issue you're probably not going to be able to make a lot of progress if your knees are shot your lower back is shot your elbows are shot your shoulders are shot and i have issues i've bitched and moaned about a few times here especially with this shoulder is just it's it's, it's the worst um another thing to consider you know how long you've been trained because uh, i see sometimes guys posting that they're still making gains whether they're in their 50 or whatever come to find out they didn't start training or they didn't get serious about it until they were maybe like in their 40s so they're still in that period because i do believe if you do things right and continue to experiment you can you can continue making incremental gains you're still gonna make your best gains in the first couple of years but you'll be able to continue making smaller gains for much longer than that and i mean 10 possibly even 20 years into training you can still be making small improvements here and there uh yeah you're not going to be putting on 10 20 pounds of muscle that's that's not going to happen so i did mention drugs before drugs will change the game obviously uh, if you've been training for 10 years and you've been stuck at the same size for maybe seven or eight of those years roughly and then you introduce drugs into the equation of course you're gonna make new gains of course you will uh, how much longer will you be able to make gains you know i don't know that's another toughest thing to say uh, I'll, I'll be you know I'll, i say we're all different i'll use myself as an example but don't don't necessarily think this will apply to you or anybody else because you know we're all on our own journeys and we all have different bodies metabolisms life circumstances but uh like i said i started training at 14 uh consistently and i uh, I was out in California. I didn't. I didn't start. I didn't try steroids. I didn't do my first cycle till I was 27 years old. That's 13 years of natural training. And I would say, uh, I, I didn't. I wasn't the first few years of steroids. I took a couple breaks. I took a break of almost two years in that point, and then after that, it became pretty consistent. You know, on cycle, off cycle. But still, suffice to say, I believe I made the vast majority of all the gains. I was capable of making on them by the time I was in my early 30s, 31, 32. Because if, if I'm very honest with myself, maybe 30, mid 30s, by 35, let's say, I had made most of the gains I was ever going to make. Um, if looking at contest pictures and stuff, if I'm very, very honest with myself, I'm, have I gotten bigger than that? No. Obviously, I'm, I'm almost 40. I'll be 49 in a few months. I do have all the injuries that are kind of limiting me. And. You know, I, I, there are things, if I used a couple other things, I do believe they would help me gain a little bit more muscle. I'm talking about growth hormone, insulin. Um, I'm too cheap to use growth hormone. Uh, nobody's throwing me a bunch of free growth hormone like they do to some people. You know, why would they? Who the hell am I? Uh, would, it, would it make a difference for me? Probably a little bit. Would it make a massive difference? I don't know. I don't know. I have known people that have basically moved up a weight class once they introduced growth and insulin into their programs after having just used basic gear, basic steroids for periods of years. Uh, but you know, you gotta you gotta weigh the risk the risk uh, reward ratio with anything, right? Uh, do I want to spend the money on it? Like I said, I'm cheap. I'm cheap. I got uh, I make decent money. I'm not wealthy by any means. I'm not broke, but I do have a kid starting college in a few months. That's my priority. I want to put him through school. Uh, and I don't want him to be burdened with uh, student loans that are going to take him 20 plus years to pay off. I, I don't even want to get into the whole student loan fiasco in the United States, but it's just, it's it's appalling if you ever really look into it. It's a scam. It's an industry that preys on uh, hopes and dreams, and I won't even get into it. But let's uh, let's just say I don't want my my son to be burdened with. I don't want him graduating college with, you know, a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars of debt that's going to take him into middle age to pay off. So I'm going to help him as much as I can. Um, you know, that's I, I. When it comes to spending money on myself, I, I don't feel comfortable doing it because I'm very old school. My parents were born in 1928 and 29. They're both long gone now. But I grew up. Uh, my dad met my mother when she already had five kids from a previous marriage. Uh, she was living in a housing project in Boston when he met her. He had a nice house out in the suburbs. Uh, he moved her out, married her, moved her out there. Had two more kids, myself and my younger brother. And my dad was a mail carrier for the U.S. Postal Service. Monday through Saturday, 
He was up at like you know five in the morning every day off to work to do that. Uh, mail route Sundays he drove a cab all day for extra money because he had a lot of mouths to feed and uh, you know that was his priority taking care of the family and you know he was I wouldn't do it I wouldn't take care of five kids from someone else but you know he was a he was a saint that way um, but I still carried that attitude I, that's something that made an impression on me is that money that I make is not my money if I have a family that's the family money it's not my money to blow a bunch of money on drugs so I can look better and I'm not putting down anyone that does because I, I know a lot of guys do it but you know if you have the money it's not an issue and you're not taking away from your family in any way you know go for it I know a lot of guys make excellent excellent money so for them it's not an issue I uh, I'm not in that position where I have that kind of money to blow where it would be it wouldn't make any impact at all but you know these are these are dopey things to talk about they really are Back to what we're talking about, hard gainers and how long can you keep gaining muscle. I do think most of us are going to hit a point where we can't gain muscle anymore. We're not going to get any bigger necessarily. We're going to be so close to that genetic potential that it's going to be very, very difficult to surpass that with any further size. But um, as it was pointed out in the questions and as, as I've noticed with people over the years, muscle maturity is a very real thing. The muscle get a more seasoned, detailed denser look over years and years of hard heavy training heavy being relative always of course uh, heavy for me now isn't what heavy was for me 15 20 years ago but uh, you will have a different look to the muscles you could you could be 220 pounds uh, at age 30 at a certain amount of body fat let's say 10 percent 10 years later 10 more years of training Let's say you're still 220, the same. You haven't gained an ounce, and your body fat's the same. You're, you're at 10% again. You could have a very different look. You'll actually look leaner because your muscles have a denser look and there's more detail to them. So you'll actually look bigger at 220 with that added muscle maturity. Or at least it's a more impressive look. Maybe it's not necessarily bigger, but uh, like I said in the last episode, I was talking about Phil Heath. That's what Phil has over all these guys trying to beat him. It's this crazy muscle maturity and detail. In the muscles and that's why he's untouchable right now these guys they don't have that the only other guy that I saw you know Dexter has that look too Kai has that look but Phil is just the king of that look right now that real grainy striated it, it's just crazy detail and that does come uh, with for most of us you're gonna get more of that as the years go by as you continue to train hard and heavy uh, squeezing the muscle really good mind muscle connection which a lot of us didn't have as youths but you know you that's that's something that comes with aging experience hopefully so you will look bigger at the same weight and the same size but you cannot gain size indefinitely um, obviously obviously as a as you hit your 40s things are going to slow down um, even if you're on TRT 50s 60s 70s I mean th sometimes people will post up a picture of some guy that's like 70 he's still jacked but you know that that's a one in a million case uh, I don't expect to be, you know, I want to be alive at 70 for one thing, but I don't expect to be even this big. I, I, by then, I'm very sure I will have uh, trimmed down, streamlined, come down to under 200 pounds, do a lot more cardio, a lot more stretching, things like that for heart health, for mobility. You know, I want to be able to get around very well and still have a lot of energy and vitality. And still be strong I'll still weight train but it's not I'm, I'm sure I'm not gonna be pushing the kind of weights I do now you know this is God willing if I make it to 70 and that, that's what I would do I don't I wouldn't be still trying to get bigger and people say why are you still trying to get bigger now it's it's just because it it's hard for me to go to all this effort uh, without the without the idea of trying to improve it's very hard for me to conceptualize training very hard eating five six good meals a day getting plenty of rest just to look the same that's a lot of work just to maintain something and even if that's the reality even if I am just maintaining I'm still in the gym trying to improve that that's the goal uh, I'm always I'm still trying new things I'm still trying new methods new exercises because I love it I have you know like I talked to Ronnie the other day uh, if you saw the interview I have that that that's one thing I love about Ronnie is because he has that passion for training he loves to train and that's how I am I love training I love it I still look forward to every single workout believe it or not 
I can't wait to go to the gym. It's, uh, I, it's hard for me to focus on work or anything until I've gotten my workout for the day out of the way, which is why I train in the morning. I just have one meal, and then an hour and a half later, I'm off to the gym. Um, so I, I love training, and I, I, I still want to improve. I don't know if I'm going to improve, but I'm doing my best. I'm doing everything in my power for now. Um, so, yeah, this has been a roundabout little ask run. But I hope I, I, hope I cleared it up. Uh, if you're watching this, you're probably not a hard gainer. You're probably not an easy gainer. You're probably like most of human beings. You're average, and if you train hard, eat right, do, do all the right things consistently, you're going to get better and better for years and years relative to, to where you started from. And that's really what it's all about because it's got to be you against you. There's always going to be somebody bigger, stronger, whatever. So compare yourself to you, where you started from, and think about how far you've come because I bet if you really do that, you know, things won't be, seem so bad after all. You realize you've actually done quite a bit. You've, you've changed your body for the better uh, more than you probably thought you had. So that's it. Thanks for watching Ask Ron. Keep those awesome questions coming. I appreciate it. And we'll talk to you later.